This law is very important, topical. It would be very nice if there was a single database. Why it hasn't started working, I can't say. All these people are waiting for the law on missing persons to come into effect. It's already been on the books for a year, but so far it's only words on paper. We looked into why the law's implementation has been stuck in bureaucratic deadlock, despite being actively pushed through the parliament and met with fanfare from international organizations. These are the memories for those whose names have already been established. 104 out of 296 names haven't been found. This is the Krasnopilsky Cemetery, located just outside the city of Dnipro. This is the biggest burial ground for burying unknown soldiers who died during the war in Donbas. The majority were identified in the past five years. The last unidentified soldiers at this site were identified half a year ago. And yet, nearly 104 graves are still decorated with crosses with the inscription temporary unidentified soldier. September 11, 2014 was our first burial. Then, every week, 11, 20 bodies. Irena Fedorchuk works in the Dnipropetrovsk Regional State Administration, and previously she was an investigator. She's been handling the burying of unidentified soldiers since 2014, from the time she received a call at night and was told that a lot of graves were needed to be dug. We got really frightened, to be honest, in September of 2014, when we were told. We asked how many, and were told a lot. But how many graves? You need to start digging immediately. Irina's task is to coordinate the actions of everyone who searches for missing persons, investigators, soldiers, experts who have access to DNA databases, and relatives of the fallen. Once we receive information about 99 and 9% match, the investigator learns everything connected to the case, the base of evidence, and handles the identification process, after which he contacts any relatives and passes all this to them. If they understand it all, then they turn to us. In Dnipro or Zaporozhye, and here we help them with organization. We show where to go and help them in the reburial process, if the relative want. For the last five years since the start of the war, Irina has been witness to terrifying tragedies and uplifting miracles. It is a unique situation. These young, unmarried people were dating. We couldn't identify the body, because he didn't have any parents, any direct relatives, no one to take samples from. Enter his girlfriend, who says, I'm pregnant. And once the child was born, we took a DNA sample and found 99 and 9% match. In another situation, one woman was calling us constantly. I know that you gave me body without a head. I know that you have some expert research going on. I have a part of the body. Please give it to me. I'll be waiting for the head. Among the unidentified soldiers buried at the cemetery, not all were members of the Ukrainian armed forces. From the insignia, from the uniforms, we gathered that they were most likely residents of the uncontrolled territories. Right now we'll be waiting. If everything goes poorly with the identification, they will have to rebury them as temporary unidentified. And we wouldn't want to put memorials saying temporary unidentified defenders for those. And he says, has brother not called you? And I say, no, what happened? He said that my son just called me and said that the airport has just been blown up. And I asked, blown up? How? This is Lviv, the home of cyborg Oleksandr Bondar, who's been missing for five years. His body wasn't found in the rubble left by the destruction of the last airport terminal in January of 2015. They all tell me, Alina, Sasha is alive. We've all seen him. But the only thing is that he suffered a serious contusion. He didn't understand where he was or what was happening. He, as the lad said, constantly called your names, the names of your relatives, and then said that he needs to go and serve. They said, Sasha, what service? Sasha, what service? I need to serve. Then the lad said that Sasha went. Went where? in the direction of the airstrip, and that's all we know today.
The soldier's sister, Alina, has spoken dozens of times over the years with soldiers, volunteers, international organizations, SBU officials, police officers and even mercenaries. It would be very nice if there was a single database where someone could check and even people from that side, they also have pro-Ukrainian people, they may have some information, but with them living in Donetsk, they don't know that people are being searched for. A few months after our conversation with Alina, she received a call that said that her brother may have been found at the Dnipro cemetery. There is a buried body, the remains of a body, and the tag on the trousers read Bonder. And I say, but our parents submitted their DNA, there was no match. Then I rang Olga Zhitovetska, an investigator from Dnipro. Why are you worried? What body? You submitted the DNA. I'll check the database for any matches. And I said, OK. Then in two days I call Zhitovetska and she says, I checked the database, no match is found. Two months later, I received the news that there is a match in the DNA. I call Zhitovetska again and say, Olga, look, there is situation. His DNA differs from the mother's and the father's by one allele. Don't you worry, that's too large of a difference. It can't be your body. So I relax again. Another month passes, an investigator rings us and says, no, that's actually your body. A second test was carried out, and I say, who carried out this test and what was used for it? No answer followed. A year later, Alina still doesn't have any confirmation that her brother was buried as an unknown soldier and continues to speak to several investigators. We are feeling desperate because we don't know what to do next, whom to call in order to find truth. The law on missing persons came into force in August 2018. The most important things this law is intended to do is rate the status missing without a trace create a database for coordinating government bodies that search for missing persons, create a mechanism for helping families of missing persons, including financial assistance. The execution of the law is supposed to be ensured by a commission formed by the Cabinet of Ministers. The commission includes members from different departments, for example, the Ministry of Internal Affairs, the Ministry of Defense, the Security Service of Ukraine, the relevant committee in Parliament, and others. The member list for the Commission was finally confirmed in April of 2019. It will have 16 people. One of these members is Mikhailo Kotolevsky, the head of the Evacuation 200 mission in the Ministry of Defense. We currently count 70 soldiers missing in action from the armed forces. And these are from up until the Debeltova battle in February 2015. After this, we don't have any missing persons without any information. At the moment, there are no serious armed actions, and the Evacuation 200 mission continues their work. They gather the bodies of those who died in the so-called grey zone between the two sides and search for the bodies of those left in the occupied territories. We collect grains of information. We don't have free movement within that territory, but we use any chance to work in the occupied territories. Mikhailo Kotolevsky says that the Ukrainian armed forces are conducting their own count of missing in action. They are trying to update this information on a monthly basis, while cooperating with the Ministry of Defense and the Security Service, and speaking to relatives. But this information should be gathered in one place. Ukraine is waiting for the moment when the first meeting will be held, and when the Commission will be able to work independently. And, according to the law on the legal status of missing persons, the Commission has the authority to create a single database of persons missing under special circumstances. When this database is created, families will be able to receive financial assistance if they are listed there. What kind of assistance this will be is up to the Cabinet. The database will only be partly open. Only people authorized by the cabinet will be able to see the personal information in it. Why isn't the database ready yet? I can't comment for one simple reason. I'm part of the commission. I've been ready to work ever since the decree on the commission members came into action. Why it hasn't started working, I can't say. I don't manage this process, but I'm an officer who's professionally ready to work in the commission. The answer to the question why hasn't the Commission started work is simple, because the Commission was not gathered by the Cabinet of Ministers. And why has the Cabinet not done this? However absurd this may sound, they clearly don't know that it is the task of the Cabinet, 
in the face of the minister or deputy minister to do that. I've sent missives as an MP three times to Prime Minister Groisman with the question, why isn't the law on missing persons implemented? I'm the co-author of this law. I perceive the fact that the Commission was recently created, but only exists on paper as a lack of action from the responsible parties. I sent a couple of missives as an MP, received a response that yes, the Commission has been created, but hasn't started working yet. This is seen very negatively by the families of the missing. Who has the procedural right to gather the Commission for the first meeting? A chairman was supposed to have been chosen, if I'm not mistaken. I don't currently recall exactly, but this is a question for the government. We gave them the conditions, now they are supposed to implement all the regulatory statutes and start working. The law has been voted on, but then everyone forgot about it. The chairman of the Committee on Human Rights in Parliament is Rehori Nemirian, and he, like Irina Herashenko, has addressed the Cabinet of Ministers on this question, both in person and in writing. All his questions were redirected to different ministries – internal affairs, justice, social policy, and so on. At the time of publication, we also put this question to the Secretary of the Cabinet of Ministers. We asked three simple questions. Why hasn't the Prime Minister gathered this commission, as required by the law on missing persons? Who has previously asked him to gather this commission? And what his answer was? For a long time we didn't get a response. But then I received emails from a variety of different ministries, internal affairs, justice, social policy and so on. That is our question, just as the previous questions from MPs and members of the commission were simply redirected to different ministries. As we were preparing this story, Ukraine had a presidential and parliamentary election. The newly elected president reorganized the cabinet of ministers. The old prime minister is no longer responsible for this law, and the new one has yet to come to this matter. And now the membership of the Commission on Missing Persons needs to be updated because some of their members were chosen from no longer existing ministries. We sent a new question to the new Prime Minister of Ukraine. When will the Commission gather and start working? We'll be waiting for the answer. Mm -hmm.